Welcome back. In my previous video, I made this table out of Australian red cedar with hue and pine inlays crisscrossing in the drawer front. What I didn't show you was, there's a secret drawer, a hidden compartment, which operates or opens when you press the diamond hidden in the pattern in the drawer front. So in this video, I'm going to show you how I made the secret drawer, the mechanism to open it, and how it all operates. So sit back and enjoy. Okay, I've machined all the components from the secret drawer and I'm really happy with the way it turned out. This section is actually the continuation of the side of the main drawer and I've separated it. And that's going to give me continuity of grain and joins so that when you look down you won't actually see a change in the way the joins are or the grain. It will appear secret. Here I'm checking the secret drawer components and runners fit correctly in the cavity underneath the main drawer. Now that I'm happy with the fit, I can glue the secret drawer together. I use locking rabbit joints for the drawer box. The locking rabbit joints are strong enough for a small drawer and are easy to make. The drawer base is glued in at this stage for added strength and rigidity. I pre-finished the inside of the secret drawer to save time and to make glue cleanup easier. I glued the secret drawer into the underneath of the main drawer off camera and let it dry overnight. After taking the clamps off, I had to cut the sections of the secret drawer free from the main drawer where they were attached to each other. Then I moved the camera around to the other side for a better view of how the two drawers fit into each other, or should I say come apart. I probably didn't need to glue both drawers together then cut them apart, considering the front of the main drawer is covered by the cedar pattern face and you can't see the back at all. Then I installed both drawers into the table for a test run. And, Houston, we have a problem. I've made both drawers. I've slid the secret drawer into the main drawer. The main drawer opens easily, pressed to open, but the secret compartment drawer hits the leg. The leg. I intentionally added the sides of the drawer on and now I have to come back and remove the side that I intentionally added on here. I have to remove that so that the drawer will actually open and work. That's the worst mistake I've made so far on this project so I'm really happy with that. It's not a lot of work. Check back in when I've got it done. I quickly trimmed off the offending part of the secret drawer then reinstalled it and it cleared the leg. Thought I had to cut the leg off there for a moment. I'm happy now the mission is saved and the drawer no longer crashes into the leg. More importantly Lola the shed dog is so happy she couldn't help but smile. Now I need to separate one of the diamonds in the pattern from the drawer front to use as the magic release button. First I drill the corners of the diamond all the way through the drawer front so I can see the position from the underneath. If I cut really close to the diamond and go down in there another four or five mil, that's going to leave the full ledge for this to sit on and a little bit more meat or timber on the button. That's what I'm going to do. See how it goes. Then I use a Japanese pull saw to deepen the inlay cuts. One advantage of Japanese pull saws is the leading teeth allow you to start a cut on a flat surface. Here I'm cutting on every side of the diamond pattern 9.5 millimeters or 3 eighths of an inch deeper. Then when I flip the drawer front over, all I need to do is remove the timber on the back to release the diamond from the rest of the pattern. The timber on the reverse side of the diamond is removed with a straight cut router bit and a trimmer. After several passes, I finally reach the depth of the Japanese saw cuts and the magic button is released from the pattern.
I drilled a perpendicular hole in a scrap of timber to use as a guide to drill the push rod hole in the front of the main drawer. The push rod is a screw with the head cut off. Very technical. Then I attach the pattern drawer front to the main drawer. I temporarily glued the magic button to the push rod with a drop of CA glue and had to be careful not to glue the push rod into the drawer because that would have been a bad thing. Having the push rod glued to the magic button while in the drawer front lined the two parts up perfectly in the right position where they needed to be joined. Then after carefully removing the push rod with the magic button attached, it was time to glue the two of them together, which I didn't video, but it did happen. So I've intentionally left it loose fit. So I'll glue it in with epoxy in the drawer front and this will be in the actual hole. So they're both lined up perfectly when the glue sets. So it won't be off like this, it won't be off like that. That's the plan. Let's see if it works. As you can see, it worked perfectly. Now it's time to make the latch. I started off with a piece of two millimeter thick brass plate, which I salvaged from an old lock. Then I cut it into the shape of a long hook on the bandsaw and filed the edges smooth off camera. The next step was to drill a hole in the middle of the hook to act as a pivot point for the latch. For the hook to line up with the push rod and engage the secret drawer, it had to be lifted 10 millimeters. So I glued a small riser block into the underneath of the main drawer. After attaching the hook to the riser block, I tested the push rod to make sure it engaged the back of the hook and it did. I drilled a hole in the drawer front next to the push rod and installed a spring. Then I had to mark and drill another hole in the brass hook for the spring to attach. Here I go again. How do you attach the spring to the brass hook with the one hand? With the click of my fingers and a little wood magic and voila, it's done. Quick tour of how the latch works. I painted the timber behind the latch black so that the brass would stand out better in the video. It really got lost against the pale timber prior to painting it black. Firstly, I made a hook from 2mm brass plate. I cut the brass plate into a 12mm wide by about 50mm long strip on the bandsaw, shaped it into a hook and smoothed the edges. I found the centre of the brass and drilled a hole which will be the latch pivot point. Then I screwed through the brass and the riser block into the underneath of the main drawer. At the end of the brass latch, I drilled another hole where the spring is attached. The spring goes through the front of the drawer and is held in place with a pin. The spring holds the latch in the lock position all the time and is strong enough to return the magic button to the front of the drawer as well. So with the magic button and the push rod attached, it goes through a hole drilled in the front and it strikes the back of the latch. It pushes the latch out of the way and releases the drawer. The next step is to create a recess in the side of the drawer for the latch to hook into. The drawer's installed. I have the wedge shaped recess for the latch to engage on the drawer. So at the moment, without the latch engaged, the drawer will open freely. But if the spring was to pull the latch back, the drawer won't open. It's, it's latched. There's a tiny, like half a mil of movement, which is perfect. But if I was to press the magic button, the drawer does open. Okay, it's all together. First real test run. Put in the springs, the latch is installed with a return spring on the latch. Thought about using magnets, but I went for a spring. And the magic button fits in. The drawer's in place. Will it actually work? Oh, no way. That is epic. I'm so happy. Anyway, I'm gonna put it in the table and see if it still works. It works on the bench. 
it's going to work in the table. Okay, it's finally together. The secret drawers in the main drawer, all the mechanisms together, does it work? Let's give it a test. And that works. <gasps> that works as well. I love it. That's incredible. How good's that?